The movie begins in 208 AD in China, when the Eastern Han Dynasty ends. The mild-mannered Emperor Shen meets with his officials and armies as the Imperial Warlord, Prime Minister Cao Cao, proposes a decree to eliminate the insurgency caused by the Southern Warlords, Sun Quan and Liu Bei. Though the Emperor has reservations about waging another war so soon, he reluctantly approves his request since he greatly influences the Empire. Outraged, Senator Kong Rong protests the decision, reminding the court that Liu Bei, a distant uncle to Emperor Shen, and Sun Quan, in line to become Duke, have no intention of rebelling and may have unintentionally become pawns in Cao Cao's rise to power. Not long after, he gets beheaded for his opposition. With the Empire's full support in his endeavor, Cao Cao sends his vast army of soldiers and cavalry to decimate Jing province and conquer the land. In the wake of the chaotic invasion, the citizens evacuate their homes. They are forced to retreat under the protection of Liu Bei's sworn brothers, Guan Yu and Zhang Fei. Meanwhile, after witnessing Cao Cao's battalion preparing to attack in a wedge formation, Liu Bei's advisor, Zhuge Liang, reports the situation to Zhang Fei and later to Liu Bei, worrying about the safety of the peasants. Amid the chaos in the village, Liu Bei's best warrior, General Zhao Yun, attempts to rescue his lord's family, only to recover the infant son when the wife sacrifices herself by throwing herself in the well to help him escape. After placing the baby in his cloth satchel, he battles through a wave of soldiers and escapes on his horse. Elsewhere, Zhang Fei uses his shield tactic to blind the incoming enemy cavalry and charge at them with spears. Zhuge Liang escorts Guan Yu to the fight as the fierce warrior slashes his way through the onslaught. Not long after, Zhao Yun rejoins the army, eliminating most of Cao Cao's frontline cavalry while carefully protecting the infant from harm. Seeing that they will soon be overrun by more enemy soldiers, Zhuge Liang orders the men to hold the line and protect the civilians as they retreat. Guan Yu leads their battalion's defense, while his brother oversees the evacuation. Elsewhere, Zhao Yun successfully returns the baby to Liu Bei while reporting the grim fate of the Lord's two ladies. Meanwhile, Cao Cao forces Guan Yu, the remaining soldier on the battlefield, to surrender, only to see him steal his prime minister's horse and war flag. Eventually, the battle subsides, and the civilians return to the village as the injured are treated. During the council luncheon, Zhuge Liang eagerly tells Liu Bei he will venture to Jiang Dong to request an alliance between his lord and Sun Quan to drive Cao Cao back to the north. Meanwhile, Jing province commanders Kai Mao and Zhang Yun deliver to Cao Cao a massive number of naval troops and battleships and a hand-drawn strategic map of Wu to keep track of Liu Bei's forces. Meanwhile, Zhuge Liang meets with Sun Quan and his royal court to present their dilemma about Cao Cao, believing they cannot surrender to a tyrant. His passionate speech about an alliance causes the officials to argue whether their leader should fight alongside Liu Bi, pointing out all the risks involved. Nevertheless, Sun Quan declares that he must contemplate his final decision. The next day, Zhuge Liang, with the aid of advisor Lu Su, visits Foreign Affairs Viceroy Zhou Yu in his military camp at Red Cliff, hoping he will be persuaded to ensure the alliance. He feels slightly impressed to see his armies perform an outdated attack arrangement called the Goose Formation under the tutelage of Commander Gon Crossing he then sees Zhou Yu abruptly stop the exercise to fix a young boy's flute after he notices it is out of tune. With his affairs in order, he gets an audience with the Viceroy, who is less than pleased to overhear his false assumptions about his military strategies. Zhou Yu then confronts his army to determine who stole the boy's grandfather's buffalo in the rice fields, threatening them with capital punishment. Though he deduces the culprits have muddy shoes, he orders their group to march through the mud to make everyone's shoes dirty, giving them a second chance to correct their mistakes. As Gan Singh returns the buffalo, the men kneel to ask the old man for forgiveness. Not long after, Zhou Yu heads to the stables and helps his wife, Xiao Chao, with a pregnant horse. Having experienced helping cows give birth, Zhuge Liang assists by gently pulling out the foal's stuck leg. To show his gratitude, the Viceroy welcomes him to his court and joins him in playing a complicated melody with the Guqin, with both men delivering an exceptional performance. Feeling impressed with him, he and his wife later discuss his appeal to join the war. Elsewhere, Cao Cao enthuses about his drawing of Xiao Chao, promising to steal her away from Zhou Yu when the time comes. He then meets with Kai Mao and his generals about their upcoming assault to invade the state of Wu, climbing aboard one of the ships in his massive naval command. On land, his vast number of foot soldiers and cavalry march side by side with the fleet. The next day, Sun Quan receives advice from his sister, Princess Sun Shangshang, to stand firm after receiving Cao Cao's message ordering the nation to surrender. Zhou Yu appears, destroys the warlord's missive, and hands Sun Quan a bow to inspire him to go on a hunt while he mulls things over. They immediately head to a foggy field with several cavalrymen to search for a tiger, which Zhou Yu compares to Cao Cao for cunning and methodical. Amid their conversation, 
Sun Shangshang spots the beast near tall grass and shoots it with an arrow to lure it out of hiding. As they pause, the Viceroy reminds the uncertain Sun Quan that he is a strategic administrator and that their forces have more significant naval expertise to counter Cao Cao's forces. He gives him an arrow, hoping he will not hesitate to slay the tiger just as he would with the enemy warlord. Setting out alone, Sun Quan bravely faces the hungry beast, even after getting knocked off his horse. After a successful hunt, he finally agrees to the alliance and battle against Cao Cao, promoting Zhou Yu as Chief Viceroy, Cheng Pu as Lieutenant Viceroy, and Lu Su as Consulting Commander, much to Zhuge Liang's delight. Later, Zhou Yu helps his pregnant wife write letters of peace, making love to her by nightfall before he prepares for war. The following morning, he travels with Zhuge Liang to Liu Bei's military camp, introducing himself to Zhao Yun, who is fiercely training soldiers with strategic attacks. He also meets Guan Yu, who teaches young children to read, and a boisterous Zhang Fei, who is busy with his calligraphy. He finally convenes with Liu Bei at a crafting station, grateful for agreeing to a friendly alliance. Zhou Yu inspires the men with a speech, using the woven sandals as an analogy to show that the key to a great army is keeping it united so that no one can pull it apart. Shortly after, an eager Sun Shangshang appears, wishing to join the Viceroy in the fight despite her lack of experience. She then makes Lu Su's horse sleep after getting insulted by him, inadvertently allowing Zhou Yu and Zhuge Liang to escape before she can reason with them. In the evening, Cao Cao enjoys a feast while entertained by dancers, one of whom he is enamored with. He becomes amused upon receiving an empty letter from Sun Quan, beheading the Wu messenger while inquiring about the people involved in the alliance. The next day, the messenger's sacrifice is honored by the officials at Red Cliff. Zhao Yun also reports that he has joined Gan Xing in training the allied armies, despite minor differences in the code of conduct. With everything set, Zhou Yu convenes with the group to formulate a counter-assault against Cao Cao's army and naval battalion. He expects the attacks to happen at Red Cliff by nightfall, though Cao Cao wants the ships to serve as a diversion while 2,000 troops catch them off guard by land. The following day, Cao Cao's cavalrymen charge on the road to Red Cliff when they stop upon seeing Zhou's land tortoise blocking the way. This tactic allows Sun Shangshang and her archers to eliminate some of the distracted soldiers. The surviving cavalry chases the women through the desert, only to be ambushed by the Allied forces' armies in a Bagua formation, trapping them in a maze-like pattern similar to the tortoise shell. With no way out, the enemy invaders are speared to death while getting bashed by their shields. Soon after, Gan Xing charges at the horsemen. At the same time, Guan Yu handles the frontline offensive by fighting off the footmen with their own weapons. Zhao Yun soon appears, evading the pikes thrown at him while he rides through another wave of enemies. The burly Zhang Fei knocks one of the horsemen down and tosses a group of soldiers to aid him. Despite getting outnumbered, Zhao Yun uses his incredible sword fighting skills to quell the invaders. Zhou Yu then orders his men to lasso the rest of Cao Cao's troops and get speared. Fed up with the assault, the enemy commander orders everyone to make a circular defensive stance with shields and pikes sticking out to keep the soldiers away. To break the formation, Zhao Yun and Zhang Fei encircle them on horseback while flailing their shields, which is an effective maneuver. The scene becomes chaotic as Cao Cao's troops get swamped by the Allied forces in a free-for-all battle. Zhou Yu leaves his position and enters the battlefield with his horse, much to Zhuge Liang's astonishment. He skillfully battles his way through the onslaught while sustaining an arrow shot. Eventually, the invaders are defeated, and he allows the commander and remaining troops to leave unharmed and return to their lord. Not long after, one of the emissaries reports that Cao Cao's naval fleet is approaching Red Cliff. Elsewhere, Cao Cao remains unfazed by the failure of his ground troops to eliminate the Allied forces, feeling confident he can even the odds in a water assault. He then orders his men to make camp near the area. Later, Zhou Yu and the group return to the spire at Red Cliff to witness the incoming ships sailing on the riverbank. While deciding to wait for Cao Cao's next move, the armies cheer Zhou Yu for their momentary victory. Later, Xiao Chao mends her husband's wound while showing him affection. Simultaneously, the warriors and officials toast the chief viceroy's plan, heartily enjoying drinks while they rest. Liu Bei asks Sun Quan to allow him to settle the 100,000 refugees in Jingzhou City after they defeat Cao Cao. He then praises Sun Shangshang for showing stupendous zeal during the battle, prompting Sun Quan to give him his blessing to wed his sister to solidify their alliance further. Feeling disrespected by her own brother, she approaches Liu Bei and knocks him out with an acupuncture touch. Zhuge Liang consoles her as she opposes arranged marriages. As they briefly chat, he schemes with her to spy on the naval fleet. The following morning, Cao Cao enjoys the servitude of the female dancer, calling her Xiao Chao. Elsewhere, Zhuge Liang fears that he and Zhou Yu may be on opposing sides one day and lose their friendship. 
The pair then discuss how Cao Cao can breach Red Cliff's defenses, believing Kai Mao and Zhang Yun must be eliminated to cripple his plan. Zhuge Liang sends a dove to the enemy encampment to maintain contact with Sun Shangshang. The movie ends as Cao Cao and his officials enjoy the Kuju Ball game. They discuss their readiness for the upcoming battle at Red Cliff. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.